Welcome to video number two dedicated to efficiency of piano playing in scales and today we are going to master another uh, drastically important skill how to switch positions without losing uh, the high quality in our scale so namely when we have to move uh, toward the next hand position using the thumb after the third or the fourth finger like here and there are a few ways how we can do that of course people who teach piano they usually stick to one uh, strategy and they say that okay this is the the way to switch positions and if you play it differently then uh, you will get health issues already tomorrow and your children and grandchildren will be cursed and stuff <laughs> but um, there are really different people and everyone plays scales a little bit differently so I'm just going to give you like the whole spectrum with some warnings where, where necessary so you just be informed and can uh, stick to a strategy that uh, suits you best so the first strategy and uh, the most let's say controversial strategy and all the Taubman method adapts are going to like hit the dislike button hundreds of times uh, for this video for me just mentioning it is by bending the thumb yeah, so you can see you can bend both joints of your thumb. So when you approach the third finger, you can move your thumb like, like that, bending it. Yeah, so here, boom, and you are already at the next hand position. Uh, the problem of this method is that it is suitable mostly for people with like naturally very dexterous and um, strong hands. Like for example, my wife play, plays piano like that, and she's a very fine pianist, but she plays piano since age of three. So she has naturally like very dexterous, very fast fingers. And for her, this playing way is the optimal one. Uh, she can play uh, scales with a lightning speed. But for adult beginners, this way of playing might be not the optimal one and it might cause some tension and overuse issues. Uh, if you want to experiment with this way of playing, just be sure to release the tension in the fingers that are done instantly. So as soon as you hit the second finger, for example, you release the thumb. So whenever you hit the finger, the previous finger has to, uh, has to be released instantly. If you have uh, static tension, and in addition, use that bending motion in the thumb. That's really dangerous. This is something to avoid. So this plain way is uh, controversial and it needs a great ability to release the tension in fingers that are done. The second way is a bit more ergonomic and it, it will be surely easier for adult beginners, uh, in my opinion. And this is when you move your thumb, like entire thumb, not really bending it in, in the nail joint. So you still move your thumb like along another keys, but you don't bend it in the nail joint. So what happens here? While playing fingers two and three, I move my thumb underneath, but the thumb is more or less straight, you see? I don't bend it. It doesn't work that well when we have to switch position after the fourth finger. That's why uh, here we would need to stick to the third way uh, of changing positions, namely moving your wrist left and right like that. So this is another option. You can also uh, play it after the third finger like that, you see? Then your thumb naturally uh, comes uh, reaches the next hand position. Especially that's important after the fourth finger. So what we can also do is going is to go gradually in the keyboard, like a little bit further along the keys, toward the fourth finger here, you see, and then add a little bit of that. Of course, I'm exaggerating right now. So in and turn your wrist and you're here on a new hand position. Uh, so I would suggest you a combination of uh, second and third ways to play piano. So when you switch position after the third finger, you do mostly the second way, moving your thumb. But when you switch positions after the fourth finger, you do a combination, moving your thumb, but also adding a little bit of motion in the keyboard and left for the right hand and in the keyboard right for the right hand. Actually, when I play a scale, I already feel that uh, my hand by default would be not like aligned to the keys 
like parallel, but ha- but it would have a, a certain angle toward the keys, a little bit uh, placed outwards for the whole scale. Yeah, it feels actually much more comfortable than when you play with the hand aligned like parallel to the key. So you might consider to play around with that angle when you play scales. Then your hand positions will be immediately already smoother. But what you have to avoid definitely is moving your wrist up and down when you switch position because this is this is the shortest way to losing the tempo evenness and having some accidental accents and stuff. So that's why we experiment with the mentioned three ways of playing scales, but we avoid moving the forearm and the wrist up and down while switching position. When we uh, switch positions after the thumb, like for example, when we go opposite direction. What is important here is to flip over other fingers. Fingers are relaxed when we flip them over, over the thumb, like that, yeah? So the simple exercise you can do, for example, is to play any thumb note, like any key played with the thumb, and then move the whole, the whole hand palm, playing fingers, two, three, four, to the left of your thumb, release, still holding the thumb, move your fingers over, like that, flattened fingers, so they're not curled, they are flattened, and play three notes, four, three, two, with fingers, four, three, two, above the thumb, yeah, like that. Yes, this uh, a great. This is a great exercise in order to feel uh, how you can move around while playing the key with the thumb. The goal is of this exercise is to get to the idea that we move, uh, we flip over the fingers while hitting the thumb, not after. So this is late. You see, I started to to move uh, too late, and that's why I made a mistake. If you move while hitting the thumb you are in position already in advance, you see? Same here. Boom. For the uh, fourth finger played after the thumb, we also have to move our elbow a little bit out, like, like that. But of course then minimizing that motion, if you do it too much, then of course it also will look funny and it will not be efficient, but a tiny bit. You see, that's uh, approximately like half of inch, probably. Yeah? I move my elbow half of inch left and right, and that already this is already enough in order to to change position from the thumb to the fourth finger. Now let's speak about our practicing routine because uh, there are many ways how we can benefit from scales, and there are many ways how we can practice them. What I would definitely suggest you is to rotate scales, constantly shifting them. So as soon as you have mastered a scale, just uh, play another one. So for example, this week you play E major, uh, next week you play um, B flat major and stuff. So just frequently changing them. And as soon as you feel comfortable with a scale, you leave that new formed, newly formed comfort zone and you start working on another scale. Uh, a great strategy is to play a major scale and at the same time it's parallel minor. So for example, when you play, uh, for example, E major scale. <laughs> And you decide, okay, I'm going to practice E major. And this is actually one of the most comfortable scales. So I really suggest you to start with E major or B major. Uh, and then you also, at the same time, practice C sharp minor scale. Because C sharp minor is a parallel minor of E major. So they have absolutely same keys. Fingering might differ, however, not in this case. But in some cases, fingers might differ. Like, for example, in uh, G major, we use one, two, three, one, two, three, four. And then E minor, it's parallel minor. We also use one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Yes, yeah, so we have the fingering is the same. You just uh, move your hand a couple of notes lower. Of course, in case of E major, uh, fingering will be different. So in E major, it's one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Five. And in C sharp minor, we would start from the second finger and then use a fingering of E major. So we start with two, three, and then we continue playing uh, like a normal 
image or scale. So fingering might be different, but nevertheless, uh, it's a great idea to play a major and it's parallel minor because you kind of kill two rabbits at once. Of course, uh, in professional music education, uh, we are usually required to play not just one type of minor, but three types of minor. Of course, a standard uh, length of the scale is four octaves. <laughs> But we were also required to play, for example, um, contrary motions. When you play two octaves up toward the center, then two octaves contrary motions, back to center, up, down to center, contrary motions, back. So. Like that. Of course, also you can play the same thing uh, using intervals. For example, most common are um, thirds. When you start in a third and play with uh, original fingering. The difficulty of this one is that when you play fast, you have to release uh, the upper voice on the way up and lower voice on the way down very quickly, so rather non legato. Otherwise, uh, since the key also needs a certain time to go up, some sounds might not uh, sound. So I play the upper voice like closer to non legato in order to make sure that the key is up by the time I have to play the same key with the left hand. And my least favorite is, of course, when you start from the principal note in the right hand, but from the third scale degree in the left hand. So you have sixth between hands. Then another very important thing when you um, lift up the tempo is that you have to follow the weaker hand. And for most of people, that's the left hand. So you have to feel in which, uh, in which tempo you're able to provide a good quality for uh, the weaker hand and your stronger hand has to conform the tempo. Another way to benefit from scales and to form some new useful skills is to treat scales with a little bit of uh, fantasy and uh, always having a certain goal when you play scales. For example, by mastering different skills like staccato playing. So you uh, give yourself a task to master staccato playing and recently I have done a special video on staccato, how to play it efficiently and without tension. So you play your scale staccato and then for example one hand staccato, another legato. Changing, uh, changing um, hands when you go down for example or uh, playing scales with kind of a Debussy light touch so flattened fingers and also playing with uh, degrees of pedaling like pressing the pedal not deeply but just staying on surface and gradually changing the pedal delicately in order to reach that kind of clarity in uh, in the sound, clarity in the articulation but nevertheless a little bit like more like wavy sensations like for example <laughs> that with flattened fingers and controlling both articulation but nevertheless uh, smoothness <clears throat> or for example uh, of course uh, it's very useful to change tempo when you uh, practice a scale so when you play a scale you always play it in a um, very precise tempo from the beginning to the end but then you switch tempo like for example one time playing a scale in a fast tempo a second time <laughs> in a slower tempo, controlling that you release the tension that you can support yourself uh, with a more like embodied hit, more precise attack on the key and stuff. So always changing the tempo in which you practice. Then, for example, another very important skill is to be able to shape your passages, of course, dynamically. That's why it's useful to practice scales, starting them very softly. Like... <laughs> then making crescendo and returning to pianissimo by the end of the scale. This is a very important skill and you, ca you can also experiment with dynamics or oppositely starting a forte, diminuendo toward the top and stuff. In my courses about uh, piano playing efficiency, you might find much more tips and tricks about piano playing and you might find these courses following the link in the description. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and write in comments your challenges in piano playing, what you find difficult and what, which topics you would like to have covered on this channel. Thanks for watching, have fun playing piano and see you next time.